Hello, today I want to talk to you about should you buy a Lamborghini or a Kia? And the reason I use two different ends of the car spectrum, one very low end and one very high end, is because too many people think buying the cheaper choice, the least expensive choice, is the frugal, is the intelligent, is the good steward way of making a purchase. But that cannot be true in most cases. The reality is sometimes you have a lot more negotiating power on these higher end vehicles. I want to give you an example. There was a dealership I used to go to that let me drive exotic cars and things that I wasn't going to buy, but normally you can't test drive a Lamborghini or Ferrari or some of these higher end vehicles. You just can't. They don't have people coming in there and joyriding these things. But in this particular instance, they had a vehicle and I was looking at it and I asked them, what's going on here? Why is, why is the odometer so low? Has the odometer been turned back? Is there something wrong here? And they're like, no. And they told me the story. This vehicle had 20 miles on it. And they told me the story of an older man came in, wanted this vehicle. And of course, you can't test drive it because of the extreme expense every mile costs because it's an expensive vehicle. So he buys the vehicle. He drives it home 10 miles. He is terrified of it because it's low to the ground, it's super powerful, and he just can't handle it. It's not for an older man. So he drives it back to the dealership and sells it back to them a few days later after his um, period when he could have returned it within three days, but he was deciding and didn't want to lose the money and he wasted too much time. So now he had to sell it back to the dealer instead of returning it, and he lost tens of thousands of dollars in the value because once it's titled is now a pre-owned vehicle doesn't matter how many miles have been put on it and so you have this vehicle sitting there that is a hundred percent brand new except has 20 miles on it a lot of times you buy a cheap vehicle they'll have 20 miles on them already when you buy them brand new because they've been test driven and stuff and this vehicle had 20 miles on it was being sold at a little bit of a discount and the dealership is still making a tremendous amount of money off this and this man lost a lot of money. Now, the point being, there are situations that people get themselves in where they need to get rid of a high-end vehicle. And you can be a benefit to them and a blessing to them and buy a nicer vehicle at a dramatically discounted rate, drive it for a few years, then sell it yourself on the a private market, not to a dealer, because they're going to pay you a lot less, because they have to have some profit, then you can make money on many times on those deals. I've known people who will buy Lamborghinis, they'll get them discounted and, and negotiate a good price on them, drive them for a few years, and then resell them for more than they paid. So who's making the wiser decision there? Is it the individual that buys a Kia for $30,000, drives it for two years, and now it's worth 20 grand, they've lost $10,000? Or the guy that buys the Lamborghini for $200,000, pre-owned, negotiates a great deal on it, drives it for two years, and then sells it for $215,000. Who's making the wise decision there? Now, I'm obviously not telling you to buy a Lamborghini or any kind of high-end vehicle. My point is, you need to think about things and don't just presume that the cheapest, lowest expense option is the wise choice. Because many times it is not. And don't also think that because you're presented two options, that one of those options must be the best choice. There may be a third or a fourth or a fifth option that you haven't even considered yet. I hope this has been a blessing for you. God bless you richly.